Oh, they'll be calling you a radical. The Great Pacific Genocide. Let's get back to this. You can't handle the truth. So, oh, where's your scientific... I mean, I, I guess I'll write a paper at Harvard. Oh, copy, paste, blah, blah. If I haven't exposed what a fraud academia is in well, the whole world, especially in the United States, then you need to wake up. So you're still waiting for these liars that have been baffled, mystified, stumped, curious, alarmed, you name it. We kept a list for a long time. We we're running at it. They're recycling now on this great ecological catastrophe. Oh, you can't be transparent and use a YouTube site for scientific study? Fuck, of course you can. I just did. Remember when YouTube used to call themselves the Great Equalizer? We were talking about this yesterday, man. Bruce from Spokane. I says the very pioneers of YouTube that were using it in this really great way have been eaten by the very monster we created. Talk about disrespect fucking spread. So, the artists, the activists, the scientists. It's always been that way in history. It's always, but this changes everything. Video killed the media star. I mean, and granted, there's every psycho freak narrative out there, and the, the policing of the internet is beyond pitiful. I mean, let's go back to pre- First Amendment, you know, I mean, so you think about it, the greatest PhD opportunity in human history, Kevin Blanche is the only one that really takes it in the re reality and is transparent about my work. It just proves to you, and this was all predicted by people like Einstein, that if you open this pork, this nuclear pork and just unload they're going to infiltrate every aspect of society. I mean, these were sums of money that are thrown at this industry that are, I mean, bigger than any industry in human history. And the tentacles, and you have in the United States, especially here, you have the great selfishness plague. You have a lock, stock, barrel of people across the spectrum who think that Money is the zenith of life, and they think by just going along with the winning team. Science has always been this way. That's Semmelweis. For Kevin Latch in March of 2011, all new knowledge will be persecuted. Of course it's going to be persecuted. So let's talk the facts. Let's talk the science. And by the way, don't let the propaganda machine, you know, don't let a little thing like three full core meltdowns and eight spent fuels, including Mox fuel, blow the fucking smithereens. Don't let that stop the nuclear pork renaissance, nuclear energy renaissance, nuclear renaissance. That's all you hear. It's just pounded everywhere. Congressional bills will want to have fucking teams and teams of lawyers going to these pathetic politicians we have. And like Carnan says, you get rid of these pathetic politicians, you just get a batch of new pathetic politicians. Maybe something else is pathetic. Maybe the American populace. I mean, they can't handle the truth. They don't want it. So these lawyers come in, write these bills. And I mean, now I see they want to reverse this got $10 million for enriching nuclear waste. Mox fuel, you know, the fuel, which it blows my mind. Ah, headline. Jimmy Carter killed this great technology of taking nuclear waste and turning it into more fuel. Oh, my God. It's against the law here. That, well, that, what do you think was in Fukushima? And we've used this technology. Remember Arriva in France? Oh, we got it. We got it. The, so they joined with Chicago Bridge and Iron. Remember? I was I consulted on that sham. That was, what, 30 years ago? And they were going to build a MOX fuel... Arriva was joined the Chicago Bridge to take this fuel, revit it, retool it, rethink, and reuse it. It's going to be better. It's going to be stronger. It's the answer for the waste. Savannah River, South Carolina. Started out at $455 million. What is it today? I think it's $35, $40 billion. 
They know for a fact it doesn't work. The Congressional Budget Office went in there and did an investigation on the thing clear back in, I think, 2013, 14. So there are billions of dollars missing. Fraud, ripped off. Every administration just throws it and they, they just go along. Let's play pretend the fairy tale lives. So now I see that New Scale has filed, don't let a little thing like meltdown, don't let a little thing like, oh, we really don't have it. We just I was like, my bad. We ripped off Utah for 10 years. Who are we going to rip off next? Oh, Texas just passed. We want it. Virginia just passed it. Won't let a little thing like uh, there is no SMR and we don't have it. Don't let that stop you. We filed the permit. We're going to bury the waste from these reactors that don't exist in the Mojave. Okay, sure you are. But Congress will throw them more money. Like I said, don't let a little thing like they don't exist stop them. Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, I mean, fairy tale, tooth fairy. Don't let a little thing like triple meltdown, and we got them all believing. One meltdown at Chernobyl, which was nasty, and that'll lead me into the trees, and that's what I'll tag this, is way more than three full crimes. Oh, we saw the elephants. You never see shit. Fucking TEPCO over and over and over is reported, which TEPCO is the United States. Ask Lake Barrett. You forget Yalta by the sea when we divided up the world? The United States runs that place, lock, stock, barrel. They've sent robot after 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 a broken record blanche robot. The robots get deep into these that you can't see nothing. You see drip melted rebar, drip concrete, deep burning. They have no fucking clue with these cores. They don't know where they're at. You know, Chernobyl, they entombed underneath it, and that leads us into Fuktonium, Kevin Lash, the father of Fuktonium. You think that's far fetched? No, it's not. We know factually. You know, there's some new studies out now that have been kicking around since, well, the very first really good study I saw on radiation in the trees from Chernobyl was 2005. We know facts, and you don't even have to go to a meltdown to understand trees. You know, I'm the first one that was walking the coast of California says, oh my God, look at this, all the trees are fucking dying. I remember being in the coast, I remember being out there, Big Sur, those giant pines, on the ridge out there by the bridge. I mean, they're iconic. They were dead out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, fuck. How does a tree, how does a pine tree, how does an evergreen stay evergreen? So the tree, the evergreen, sucks up radiation from the sun, right? It stores it inside that. Have you ever taken a pine needles? You've been out camping? Not more than these politicians never make camping. <laughs> These scumbag scientists who claim they're scientists, they never make camping. But you take a handful of pine noodles and throw on your fire, <clears throat> what do you think that is? What do you think that is? That's how they say green all year. Even in the great white north. So, my hypothesis in the early days, you know, is a full-blown... Now, remember, it took Kevin Lance a year and a half to convince anybody it was even one melt let alone three, and it's more likely four, at least. And who knows about, that's it, Fukushima Diachi. We don't know it, Diani. We don't, the only reason we, we don't even know about the other reactors. How would we possibly know? We had a live cam on this one in the sea because we didn't trust them. And that was the activist community and visual proof showed it blowing to smithereens or you wouldn't even know about Fukushima. you just go along. So Kevin Blanche's hypothesis when it happened, I knew, no way, nine on the Richter, I'm like, there's no way. These cores are gone immediately on the shake. They're blown. The, the, it's finally happened. You know, Chernobyl, one graphite, new reactor with no spent fuel, blew to smithereens. I mean, what a nasty nightmare accident. But just like today, I mean, how did Putin sell? I thought he was Orthodox Christian. How did he celebrate the resurrection? I mean, it's Easter. He conscripted 150,000 men. You know what conscription means? You know, that's not even draft. That's just, let's go. Young man. Ukraine, excuse me, this old Soviet Union, which Ukraine was part of, did that in 1986, in April of 86. They went, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of men. Let's go. And they went to work on it. They went and found the pieces of the core because it blew up. And 
they mined underneath it. They did the what we call the egg, the bubble. They put the scop some car went to shit. I mean, I have I remember seeing footage in Austria of people going and grabbing the scrap metal and selling. I mean, there's another one over it now, but they mined underneath it. What did the United States do? They sent in the USS Reagan, make it so. Sent in seven ships and they were told to turn around. I mean, I've talked to the Admiral himself. I've talked to you know, these muck mucks that were in there face to face, toe to toe, at the USS Reagan hearings, trials. I was there all the time. I mean, how come that didn't go to Sprint? I mean, went all the way to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, no, God forbid we take on the Nuclear Energy Crime Syndicate. So, Kevin Latch's hypothesis of the Great Pacific Genocide was these are full blown meltdowns. Now, remember, everybody's arguing, and I want you to go back in time and these so called experts. Helen said the Japanese were tidy people and cleaned it up. Busby says the Pacific Ocean is a big place. It'll dilute. Nuclear waste doesn't dilute. Nuclear fallout doesn't dilute. You know, we can go on and on and on. Gundershill argued with me for weeks, if not months, that it was a hydrogen blast. And there was no core meltdown. Okay. Okay. So I'm going crazy. I knew these were meltdowns. I knew they were. I'm like, this is the first time it's happening. It's going to release an energy unforeseen in the history of mankind. Now, you're telling me you know the byproduct of three full core meltdowns. How do you know? It's never happened before. So in science, similarized, little invisible germs find the air. Doctors wash your hands. You hypothesize. Then you have to do the field work. And then the evidence will yay or nay your work. You know? So, and then if you were right, it becomes the new no. You don't think that new elements appear into our environment? Well, how about Tennessean? How about liver morning? How about California? How about plutonium? What? What? They're, they're not natural. Yeah. Fuktonium. So, then to me, Chernobyl, but this will lead me into this. Chernobyl, we know that the radiation fallout got into the timber, got into the trees. And we know even by cut down trees, they cut down whatever, to this day, test site. The reindeer study in Norway, to this day, the variants, to this day. You know, th these elements last for hundreds, if not thousands of millions of years. So we know it's unarguable that the fallout, the radiation, which I named Fuktonium, direct fallout, I have pauses. Look, here's how this is going to play out. Play back the tape, Your Honor. These are full blown up meltdowns. They're lying, they're lying. They're going to circle the wagons. They're going to target a propaganda machine like that. Now remember, they took Radnet offline. What's Radnet? The radiation detecting network that you built, you taxpayers paid for. Do you know what Cosby said? They crashed it that day. You think that's just a coincidence? They just, why would they crash that? Oh, come on. You know, Obama's flown to South America after he gives that. When Cheryl Mills' emails are coming out right there saying, don't go outside, it's radioactive. That's his aide. The same time he's getting, standing on the wall telling the second or third greatest lie in human history, the second greatest lie in human history. I want you to know what I know on St. Patrick's Day 2011. Scientists tell that the plume is safe. It's coming over us right now. No need to take any precautions. You know, you don't need to do anything. It's fine. When Cheryl Mills' emails are going out to all their people on the inside in the Beltway, including everybody inside, including the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, all of them. You know, how all of them were getting these emails? And it's been leaked out. It's out there. You know, FOIA documents, the ones that weren't retracted. The same day, he's telling you it's safe. These were coming out saying it's not safe. It's radioactive. Don't go outside. And if you have that man, I say, wear a hat. What? Well, well, that, like that's going to see. Wash your clothes. Take a shower. Eat some night. <laughs> then he's flown to South America with all the muckmucks. You know, the Savannah River mocks fairy tale field in. Now, where's Chicago Bridge and Iron now? Bankrupt. Arriva in France is what bankrupt twice at least, completely wiped out. That thing doesn't work. It's just a big ripoff. It's all a fucking sham. You know it's all a sham. It always has been. You know, they're there to make energy. That No, they're not. They're there to make work our way so you can turn it into weapons grade, make more bombs and make the industry richer and richer. How many nuclear bombs you got to have? Which came first, the nuclear chicken or the egg? So Kevin Lynch hypothesized in the early days, look, this energy is going to be pushed into the Pacific Ocean. Water going to run over it. It's going to burrow down, burn through, and the water's just going to rainstorms, monsoons, whatever. We're going to build our ice wall. Remember our ice wall? Oh, fuck. What a joke that was. It was one lie after. Remember dumping salt water from the helicopter? I mean, oh, God. I mean, it's just one lie after another. 
when they knew they couldn't get near it. Then they scrape up all the soil and bags for a freaking miles. They've spent right now close to $300 billion on the cleanup of Fukushima. $300 billion. They scrape the soil for miles and miles and put in bags. The trees. I mean, you look, the deforestation just went there. <laughs> but let's get real about that region. Okay, that's one thing. But these cores are burning down. And the jet stream moves left to right. So the vast majority of all this energy that is this new, which I named Fuktonium, that's coming from Fukushima, is take the hit has been in the Pacific Ocean and or and North America. This nuclear disaster happened on the right coast, on the west coast, or excuse me, on the east coast of Japan, not in the west. Jet stream moves left to right. We are the downwinders, the direct hit, and that's been proven. So Radna went back up after they took it down for a long time, and we've tracked it. I mean, there's been YouTube sites. We know the radiation spiked all over. We know Kevin Black's hypothesis. So these are full-blown-out meltdowns. They're lying, they're lying, they're lying. This energy is going to push into the Pacific Ocean, unforeseen in the history of mankind. This is hot, 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 boiling the world, Earth's water. Yeah, let's boil all Earth's water. That's how we'll cool down the Earth. Oh, my God, up is down. It's insanity. So these meltdowns happen first time in human history. Never happened to Mayak, never happened to Santa Susana, never happened at Three Mile Island, never happened at Chernobyl. One at Chernobyl blew up, they entombed it. And it's nasty. By God, it's nasty. And that's been proven and proven and proven. So this energy pushed it in the ocean. This energy is unforeseen in the history. It's going to be new. It's new. It's new. It's going to freaking... Einstein clear back in the day said, if you ever let this genie out of the bottle, these things melt down, it's going to change every piece of biology on the face of the planet. Well, humans adapt. Yeah, 50 generations, he said. And that was a hypothesis, of course, like China syndrome was a hypothesis. A lot of it was hypothesis. But this is real. I don't do, I mean, I do, I did hypothesis, but I'm a biologist. I do the real work. So my hypothesis is going to push in. It's going to break the chain. It's going to break the eco chain. You know, and all these people posting work now that's verifying everything Kevin Blanche said, and I still get no fucking credit? What? And you can't tell me if you're a marine biologist on the face of the planet, you haven't watched a Kevin Blanche video. You know and subconsciously they're saying, oh, fuck, this guy's right. Oh, my God, this guy was right the whole thing. Oh, my God. But nobody's good willing to give me fucking credit? <laughs> what, because I was too transparent? I'm not in your fucking club? You know, so, I mean, I was... I mean, I have credentials up the yin I went to the number one school in the fucking country. I mean, my credentials are long. I mean, boots on the ground and academia. I have all of that, then some. So, I hypothesize the center's going to break the eco chain. The very first thing that will happen is the tide pools will go, the sponges, the sea stars. That was my hypothesis. That'll be the first. This is going to cause a chain reaction. It's going to take out the plankton and all these animals. It's going to take time, but it's the jet stream. You throw your rubber ducky in at Fukushima. I knew the Japanese current was right there. I knew that this meltdown was very close to the Japanese current. This energy was going to keep running over these cores. These spent fuel pools that were blown in, blown to shit. It was just going to keep pushing in, you know, to the ocean. And here comes the Japanese current, which hits the California current. It goes into the California curve, right on the Oregon-California border. It splits, runs up into Bristol Bay, runs all the way down, to the point where we're picking up cesium-137 in tuna in San Diego in the summer of 2011. But you throw your rubber ducky in, it will be at Eugene, Oregon, within six, seven days. And that was proven. The, there was a bridge landed on Gold Beach, a bridge you drive on from Fukushima, Japan, on day six or seven. I knew this was going to happen quickly. And I knew this place, this hole, it's going to come. I was out there walking. I was out there dying of cancer, walking. I did the field work. I saw all the debris clean it up. I post it up, they take it down. You know, so I watched the pine trees go, and I watched all this, but my hypothesis was this energy. This energy is going to, and then the, it's going to rise up off the storms. It's going to cause a heat. Now, play back the tape. I named it the Great Western North American Heat Dome. It's going to cause a heat dome. It's going to cause a heat bubble up over the frame, it's going to get into the fucking trees. It's going to, I mean, I start talking about the Fuktonium fires long before they happen. I says, this energy is going to store in their needles. It's going to store in their bark. It's going to store in their wood, which we know the sun's energy stores in trees. I says, this energy, 
Livermore, California, bringing star power to Earth. Star, the sun can give you cancer from 94 million miles away. These are just 6,500 6, miles as the crow flies from here in North America. I'm like, this death stream moves left to right. So this energy is going to get into these trees. And it's going to cause spontaneous freaking fires. This fire episode that happened post-Fukushima over there is the most epic in world history. Well, at least since humanoids have been here. You know, it's bigger than Krakatoa. And the fires. I mean, I remember being in California and this ranger talking to me and they were saying, thinking that it was a bunch of arsonists working together, all fucking got together. And, and he says, I remember watching some of your videos a long time ago and you were saying that, but you were the first one reporting this. These try, it was the, actually the, the bark, the thing, the atmosphere was going to catch a fire. And they all kind of, now think about this. How crazy is that? We know over thousands of square miles that dozens of fires started at the exact same time when the conditions came exactly right. That's, well, it's real simple. It's real simple. This fucking energy was in the trees. It's in the bark. Radiation? Well, it's a form of radiation. Yeah. You know, what is it? I named Fuktoni. Fuktoni fires. Fuktoni fires, a country of deniers, a, you know, a country of liars. And I says, it's going to be epic. And the whole thing that, oh, just rake up the forest. It happened to pff, there were more fire. I mean, I spent so much time in Idaho in those days. Idaho National. You know, fires were in Idaho. Oh, my God. The whole Western bubble. And just two years ago, I'm the guy that predicted the heat, the drought over. You know, for now, this is the greatest drought in 1200. I says, you could see it shifting. You could see this heat dome shift, shifting. It just moved the energy. That's all. What's going on in Canada right now? Holy fuck. It's the same thing. And so that was my hypothesis. And so the starfish are going to go first. Oh, did they? I says, it's going to take out the plankton. So... They call it wasting disease. Now, you know, after the fact, when Kevin West is saying it, it's going to cause, I'm the first guy that started reporting you could physically actually see the plume. Me and John Kirk up there in Vancouver, Lori in San Diego, you could physically see the blob. I'm the guy that named it the blob. I'm the, I'm the guy that named it that. So, what's the blob? Blob's acidification. And I said that all the way back then, I said, that's what it's going to do. It's going to take out the healthy species. What moves in? The invasive species. What is that? Scum. That's what it is. That's It's black. It's mold. It's It took over. And now, you know, I'm like, it's going to take out the tide pools. Oh, it did. It's going to take out the anchovies and the sardines, the fold plank, the big fishy little fish. And the smoking gun's going to be the salmon. Why the salmon? Because we don't get dead humans in bone marrow. Also, I said it's going to spike cancer dramatically, which it's been proven that it has. Our survival rates are getting better and better. I'm living proof. Now, just the fact that I get cancer that year and go to the bone marrow plants on 11, 11, 11. What the odds of that? I mean, billions to one. So, all this I said is going to break the chain. The photoplankton is going to go. Anchovies and sardines will go. The salmon, we don't catch dead humans in bone marrow plants. It's hippos loves. Oh, Kevin Lanch does. I was almost one of them. We don't catch dead tide pools. Oh, Kevin Lanch does. You know, with a YouTube camera in a very organic raw way that you're supposed to do when you're studying and doing data you're supposed to be open and transparent and raw data as much as you and i know that and i did you know for the world to see you know and so you gathered the data on the tide pools on all this so i says the smoking gun will be salmon and why the salmon salmon idaho oregon washington british columbia Alaska, they don't live in rivers, they live in the Pacific Ocean. Now listen, steelhead salmon, oh, they're trout, they're a <coughs> trout is a salmon. Steelhead salmon go to sea for one year, one year, that's all. They come back, they're called half pounder the first time they come back. Then they go back to sea again, come back the second, that's it. So their life is very short. I says, we'll see the steelhead effect immediately, which we did. 2012, 2013, in an acute way, we call that an outlier. I says, versus outright liars. And so then I says, but the Chinook, which is the big hollow beast, will not go till 2016. Everybody's like, what are you talking about? There's so many Chinook. We got record returns in 2011. Well, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I didn't know if I was going to be right, but I thought I probably was going to be right. I wasn't sure. So 
Everybody's arguing with it. I was out there on the ocean. I've been fishing Alaska. I've been blah, 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 you know. The record returns. I says, will you believe me when they collapsed in 2016? Why 2016? Because the Chinook salmon go to sea on average for five years. Now, and I says, if that happens, that will is going to verify me that this is real, which I was pretty sure now because I watched the tide pools going in a cute way. They're calling it wasted. That's an acute collapse. I watched the trees, I, you know, starting to burn in 2013, 14, in an epic, acute fucking way. I watched this all folding out. So when the salmon sure is shit, just like I said, unbelievable, 2016, just off a cliff. I mean, record returns from $4 million on the Columbia with the takeout to, you know, a few hundred thousand. That's on the Columbia. The rogue, I mean, down 97%. Now, you go, you can talk at the Kenine. They had 1,975 returning Chinook spring salmon for the year on the Kenine last year with no fishing. They should get that a day. And then we're talking by volume. We're not talking, you know, we're talking by number of fish, not by volume, by weight. It's a catastrophe. So you can walk down the Kenai, the Nushkak, you know, all the way down, work down the Fraser in British Columbia, the mighty Columbia, the, you know, the Rogue, the Deschutes, the Klamath, the Jedi Smith. The Jedi Smith and the Klamath are right next to each other. They're Klamath has dams. It did all this time. Jedi Smith has no dams. None. You know, they're both down 97% since 2016, just like Kevin Lynch said, in symphony with each other. Dying at sea. I'm like, I remember I guarded those numbers and I worked so hard on it every day and I'm watching them like, God, am I right? Remember how much work I put into it? I mean, those videos were getting a lot of fucking views too. And I'm like, God, am I going to be right? Or am I going to be wrong? I didn't know. I'm like, you're going to look like a jackass if you got this wrong, but so be it. I'm like, I'm hoping I am wrong, but I'm watching them. I'm like, right then, I'm, I already knew. And I'm like, oh, fuck, we were late. Look at this. This is an outlier. Unbelievable. And that's when the Army Corps engineers classified me. Remember the Army Corps engineers were doing videos on the Columbia and all over. Look at this great return cycle. And then they classify Kevin Lynch, which that's unarguable. I got people inside leaking me emails. I put them online, you know, and I'm like, oh, fuck. The fires, oh, my God. I watched it. They were, I mean, those fires were brutal. Well, they still are. That energy shifted. I mean, so the sills in the sea lions. I'm in California working the coast when that acute class for you was happening. When, I mean, I had them walking right up trying to freaking eat. They, I watched sea lions and seals trying to eat rocks. You know, starving if, you know, the famous photographer that goes out to the islands and counts the pups, you know, off the coast of California. He showed up in 2014 at Pismo. Remember, I used to do Blue Hearts on Valentine's Day at Pismo at Diablo Canyon. You know, my protest, and I was organized, and he says, you know, we've been photographing, seriously. You know, we tag him, and also won't let us put on one orange tag instead of, you know, two. And we go back out there, and we save them. We go back out there, and we just can't find any. We found one with an orange tag last year, and we tagged a lot of them. We named it Blanche because I was fighting cancer then, as you know. You know, and just the fact that that's the answer. Congress has got a law passed. To, right now, as we're speaking to this moment, they're killing all the sea lions on the Columbia legally because I threw a fit. You can't. I'm the guy that says, no, 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 you can't do that. It's against the law. Con well, they went to Congress. Congress passed a law that you can legally. So here we're rescuing them, saving them in California, working our ass off, spending all the money. They swim right up to the mouth of these rivers to feed on Chinook salmon like they have for millions and millions of years. And they euthanize them. They kill them. They shoot them. We called the Portland Zoo and asked them, well, when they kill me, are you taking them? You know what the Portland Zoo told us? The lead zookeeper told us. He told Martin and myself, oh, we're, we're not feeding our polar bears any of these dead euthanized seals or sea lions. No way. They're too toxic. And I said to him, well, wh what do you mean? He says, the ocean. I says, you know about, of course we know about Fukushima. Why do you think we're not feeding them? Remember they were all testing for leukemia? Man, that was clear back. We're talking 2014, all that work that I was doing. 
you know, all this change. And then when the mirrors all started to wash up dead, remember that? When all the birds, I was, you know, remember walking past one, oh my God, look at this, including this year, this has been going on, all the shorebirds started to die. I remember that uh, old retired biologist up in Alaska in Bristol Bay, he was walking along, he says, there's a dead bird every square inch in a starvation event. He knew it, and he called the news, he called everybody, he called the fishing game, and alas, they wouldn't do anything. Well, his granddaughter worked for Channel 11 in Anchorage, so they went to her. You know, and she's like, oh, well, I love my grandpa. I know he knows his shit. She put it on the news. Then our last fish game goes out there and says, oh, God, we didn't know. Oh, oh. I mean, just this acute radical catastrophe. It's just the chain reaction, just like I said. All of it in symphony. All the evidence. Now, I told, said they're going to tell you 10, 13 years from now what I'm telling you in day one. Frog boiling, nuclear frog boiling 101. It took, I mean, it took Leslie Stahl and Lake Barrett on 60 Minutes, well over 3,000 days to tell you what Kevin Latch told you in the first hour. Well, these are full-blown mountains. It's out there. But the American public just wants to ignore. They, they, they ignore it all. You know, they can't handle the truth. They're too weak. They don't want the fucking truth. Well, they sure went after our Chernobyl. Well, that was the old Soviet Union, Cold War, you know, manufactured. But here, all this evidence here, this catastrophe Cancer rates spiking everything that I said. You know, so I go to California. I'm dying of cancer. Remember, I got AML leukemia, unsurvivable leukemia in 2011. Now, what's the odds of that? The odds when the doctor, you know, when they finally figured it out, I'm dying. I'm sucked up to nothing. I'm just fading away. You know, acute radical, acute AML. With a marker of four, nobody survives that. Nobody. You know, I end up at LDS. He said, and the, just the, the, what's the Cisco odds? I go into the bone marrow trying on 11, 11, and I'm transparent. Doing videos, I'm, I used to took a long risk. The brass up at LDS hated me for doing those videos. Where they jump my ass, they were all over me about my video camera. But now they let everybody do it. You know, there's a woman that was in my exact room getting millions of views. God bless her. I believe she's still alive. You know, but I was the pioneer of that. You know, and so I mean, all this hard work and the physical attack kicked off Medicaid when I'm in 2015, doing this work with no money. I was a millionaire when I got sick. Remember, I had you buying all that Tesla stock. I mean, I have 30,000 shares of Tesla. When an IPO, do you know what that'd be worth? And remember, I'm just had you go, Apple, go in, Apple, go in. I tried to, you know, because I'm trying to raise money for this work, trying to build a, you know, scientific army. Well, they call up that. They hire teams of trolls to freaking rip that apart, just shred it. You know, so all this historic work. Well, in science, now we have the data. You know, we have 13 years worth of data now, right? Right? So now my work's being verified every week. Now they're actually calling it for, for the first year. Last year, they first started saying Fukushima. I mean, they wouldn't even say the F word for 12 years. I mean, you don't think that's a conspiracy? Oh, come on. Toss, toss, provide. I mean, you think that's just coincidence? Nobody would even say it. No print media, no media, no nowhere. Let alone call it a nuclear meltdowns. Now they're saying Fukushima nuclear meltdowns for the first time ever. And they're saying... Second biggest to Chernobyl. All right, so they've got you convinced. One in Chernobyl is more than three, Winston. Including eight spent fuel pools, including MOX fuel, which makes a lot, which is supercharged. There's no byproduct from that. <laughs> Just a, probably the greatest event in human history, at least since 416 Krakatoa, and I think it's bigger than that. Yo, now... Ken Buser comes out, and I'm the guy that leaked his study. There was a secret KOK study, the Hawaiian boat, that was going over there with multiple scientists who went to Fukushima in June of 2011. And they took samples. And I'm the guy that leaked it out because it got leaked to me, and I put it on the Internet before there was any data. And I posted it over and over and over. They were in the marine biology boat from the University of Hawaii, which now they've retired and parked it up. And so... They, it gets leaked out that their samples they took into the current, the Japanese current. They were 40 kilometers off, 25 kilometers away from the Fukushima plant in that current, in that boat, 300 meters. They were taking samples now. First sample set, season 137, they were using, but they were using strontium 90. They're using all the said culprits. You know, only come from a nuclear exchange, only come from a meltdown. They're not natural occurring. They're man-made. And so the first sample set, it gets leaked out. And it's just, I leaked this out in 2014. And this, this study happened in June of 2011. Three times the background levels. Now, do I have to explain what background levels are? Background levels is the radiation levels that are in the Pacific Ocean because of the Bikini Atolls and the bomb testing. 
and all the dumping they've done for years. So in a cute fashion, we're three times over the background levels. That's enough to scare the shit out of you. Second sample set, I remember when I was reading the first time I was reading, I'm like, when second sample set, I read the next line, it says 50. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm right. I'm like, oh, God. 50 times, that's enough to scare. That's it. It's on. Then I read down the next line. Third sample set, 1,000 times. I'm like, oh, fuck. Now there are conclusions out there. In conclusion, the radionuclides, the derivative from the nuclear meltdowns of Fukushima, Japan, are already into the current, and there's no stopping it. It's into the biosphere. That's in 2011. I leaked that in 2013. So now Buzler, who's playing all his games, he comes out and does an interview last year. You know, he's the guy at Woodholes, and he says in the interview, I think he slipped. I think he it wasn't supposed to, but he said, when we got to Fukushima, Japan in June of 2011, in the harbor outside Fukushima in the ocean, the background levels of these radionuclides were millions of times the background levels. Well, what do you think? It just went away? And then you fall for this rouge on the tank flushing. Okay, the tank flushing rouge. Now, I proved that's the greatest red herring in history. If you don't know what a red herring is, Google red herring. So, the greatest red herring in history is the tank water fallacy. They're catching all this water. Remember, their ice wall, all these fallacies, these lies, and this cover up the block out of Fukushima. Don't say the F word. So, they start flushing on August 24th, 2023. Well, two months right before that, it comes out, gets reported all over media that the Japanese Northern Fishing Alliance out into the ocean is catching rockfish with 18,000 becquerels of cesium-137 per kilogram in their flesh, 180 times over the safe legal limit. Now, remember, they raised the legal limit. Congress did it several times, and they did the same thing. Over the raised legal limits, 180 times. <laughs> you eat the fish, it's going to kill you. I'm telling you, you're going to get cancer. And so... You know, not to mention the animals and everything else that is just acutely collapsed. Well, that was okay then. Let's go a year earlier in January of 2022. 20, Fishermen caught fish and they decided to test them on their own and then reported it. And then different agencies looked at it and whatever. I think they were 14 times over the safe legal limits. Yeah, 1,400 becquerels of cesium-137. So then we go back to Buzer study, clear back in 2011. So it isn't like the data isn't there. It is there. The Radnet went back online after several months, and YouTubers and lots of people just tracked it and watched these acute spikes going on. I mean, the fires. So I hypothesized all this. This is going to release an energy into the It's going to break the eco chain. It's going to freak a bit. It's going to be the greatest ecological test. It's going to cause a heat dome, which has been verified the, the greatest drought in 1,200 years. And the Fuktonian fires, first time in human history. That has never happened before, and that's well documented now. You know, it's going to get in the trees, you know, and Fuktonian fights going to break this eco chain. The wealth data, you know, I'm the first one. I remember standing at PB, you know, all that work I did there, and Lisa's with me then. And I'm like, she says, what are you doing this morning? And I says, it's time. We're going to start seeing this well catastrophe start to happen now. They're already dying, and I know they're dying because I'm getting reports all over. They've been dying since about 2013, 14. It took the, their plankton feeders. I says, you're going to start to see an acute radical gray well collapse. Now, I already knew the humpbacks were going, and I knew I was, I knew the grays were starting to go too. But I says, this is going to be a, it's going to capitulate, and it's on. So we started counting. Noah's numbers are out there now, but it was us. Our, I, don't know, I had everybody all over. I had the field listening, all ears, sending me every link, every one. You know, we counted well over 300. I'd believe 312 we counted that year. Washed up alone that year. What was that, 2017, 2018? Now it's being verified, those numbers they're calling it. What did Noah call it? Uh, the not acute, unusual mortality. But the bigger study that just came out was the biologist on the humpbacks and that one's more in detail, 75 biologists working together to regurgitate Kevin Blanche's data. But anyway, they came out and said that this acute radical catastrophe on the humpbacks. And they're saying the collapse is at least 30% of the entire population. They said it's most likely much, much more. 
And they finally come out. Remember, they're cutting up the wells. We'll get back to you. Uh, we don't know what it is. It, I remember standing right there. The well washed up. This uh, thin back. I was calling it a juvenile. That was just a Freudian slip. I was calling it a juvenile humpback, but I knew it was a thin back. And so they're interviewing SeaWorld and these bodies. Oh, we think it was a virus. Some old guy said, I think it's a virus. I says, are you fucking, what are you talking about? It's starvation. I've been watching this well for two weeks, which I had been. Now you got packs of orcas have moved out of the southern pod. You have a pack of orcas that are in Monterey, pack of orcas from the tropical pod that are camped out in San Diego. Oh, they're, uh, because they're starving to death. You know, so they come out in this study and say, yeah, we've finally figured it out. This acute starvation event started in 2012. And it was starvation, and it was caused by the blob. You know, the, the plankton went, just like Kevin Lynch said. But then they don't finish. Well, what caused the blob? How can that just appear, presto mundo magnet, like that? When science, if you're a real scientist, we know that's called an outlier. If something just happens acutely radical like that, and we have the data, you have to figure out, well, something caused that. It just didn't, boom, presto magic mungo, boom, just immediately. The, we call those outliers as acute catastrophe. We know that now. Well, I've known it the whole time. My dad has went out, but it's being verified every day now. Remember when I was walking the whole coast and everybody'd laugh at me? I remember this these teachers, these professors came to me and says, you know, we thought you were full of shit on this cute stats. We were watching your videos and listening to you on your radio shows, or whatever, and you're walking the coast, sleeping in a sleep bag and reporting back. And so me and our two children, our high school age two children, boy and girl, we decided to trace your steps. We're both marine biologists. And she says, we trace your steps. And she says, we were laughing at you. After we trace your steps, and I, we're not laughing at you no more. We owe you an incredible apology. You're the greatest biology in history. I remember Steve at the Monterey Aquarium laughing at me in 2015. And then the two old retired marine biologists are waiting for me there. Kevin, Kevin, we want to report you. The greys are giving birth in Monterey Bay. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. They're starving to death. Yeah, we're out there in a rowboat. And she says, my, I, our daughter and son, these are department chairs, retired. Our daughter and son are department chairs now. We're not speaking terms because of Fukushima. They don't care. We're out there. We're tracking these. These animals are enumerated. They're starving. They can't make it to Mexico. They're giving birth to mom. I'm like, oh, fuck. Which I reported in real time. And Steve was laughing at me on my typo. Then he resigned, moved to South America. These people inside the aquarium used to laugh at me. I was there all the time. And now they're like, well, Kevin, your work is historic. I mean, your type of work blows my mind you know, how cutting edge you were and how raw. And and you can't tell me these people haven't ever seen any of my videos. I mean, how many millions of millions? I'm a marine biologist. I'm a butcher. What's a cow? I'm a baker. What's a cake? I'm a marine biologist. Who's Kevin Blanche? I mean, come on. And so all this acute, so we call that an outlier science right now. So we have all the data. We have 13 years. We have such heavy they count every salmon with salmon on every one of these said rarements well, well documented because they're a commodity, you know. I mean, it's well documented. All of this is well documented. So we now you can plug in regressionary models. You can do your modeling work, whatever. We know absolutely unarguable. You could have disagreed with Kevin Blanche all the way. And my style saying fuck every other word. Being, I knew that YouTube was based on retention. I was I, I taught communications at the number one school business in the United States. I mean, I was an honor student. I was a BIS student. Biology, finance, fine art. You know, I used them all. And I knew that. I knew to, this genre was that big. I knew that this was that powerful, could change the world with it scientifically. I knew that. But I knew the visual genre, retention, and in the brain is millions of times subliminal messaging. Millions and millions of times what the written word is. And I used it, and I used it in a beautiful way. And I knew that the search engine wasn't on view count, it was on retention. I used to Google salmon collapse, well collapse, Fukushima collapse. I was everywhere. You'd get 19 to 20 on the sidebar. And they didn't really find out how to kettle me and get a, they really didn't get me kettled until early 2018 because it was against the law. And then, of course, the Trump administration killed net neutrality. And then, of course, then the lefties went after the First Amendment. And, you know, it used to be the righties used to go after the First Amendment. Now the lefties go to me. The right, I mean, up is down, black is white. So they started kettling my work, but it was too late. My narrative was out. You know, you'd Google 19 to 20 on the salmon collapse, on the whale collapse, on Fukushima, on the meltdowns, every 19 to 20 on the sidebar was Kevin Lynch. I was competing with BBC, you know, Reuters, NBC, ABC. I was kicking the shit out. You know, 
And they knew it to the point they classify me, go after me. And by the way, I'm in critical condition doing this work with no money. They kicked me out of Medicaid in 2015 while I'm under treatment, heavy treatment. No one will treat me. My heart valve's failing. No one will treat me to the point where I collapse in my fucking yard this time of year on an Easter Sunday in 2017. I'm going to see a doctor. You know, I'm popping into emergency rooms all over, including LDS, including Yon McKay, including Ogden Regional. Michael Hawkins tell me, uh, go see your dentist. When my vow is completely failed, they won't treat me because I've run out of money and I have no insurance no more. They kicked me on Medicaid after I forked over a million dollars and I collapsed. Open heart surgery in 2015. I'm arguing with them, telling it's not working. Slowly started to lose all my teeth. I have no care. I'm getting, I mean, I don't know how I've done this. It's so much pain. My gallbladder went, you know, the chemo. I mean, I had no shot to live and I had no safety. Net. I had no funding. I had, no, I had a little bit now, but it's very little. But it's still enough, and it's all comes from California. People who live on the ocean, people mostly in NoCal who ride on the ocean, those are the people that fund this work because they're like, "Oh, this dude's right. This is some important historic work," you know, and talk about brand themselves in history. And I mean, they're going to be the most famous funders of the most famous PhD in human history. This is the most famous PhD in human history. It's an argument now. We know, obviously. Scientists are mystified, they're baffled, they're stumped, they're curious, they're alarmed, they're fucking bewildered. We know that is fraud. It's not even lack of science, it's fraud. Scientists, we don't do coincidence. We get to work. First you hypothesize knowledge. These are meltdowns going to cause this energy, which I call fructonium. It's going to get into the trees. It's going to cause the heat. Everything that I said. Statistically, probability for that to happen, what I said, are trillions do one. You could run regression. Everything that I said that this acute radical catastrophe is going to happen, it's going to, these animals... These fires, these trees, everything that I said, the, the thing, you can put that in symphony, you're talking trillions to one. But it's the event. I knew this event was the first time in human history. I knew that it was going to be hard for me to take them on. I'd already been taking them on my whole life. But I didn't realize that the American populace was going to turn their back on me. They were going to turn their back and just go like this and just play pretend to the point where Spending more and more money on nuclear that doesn't exist. SMR is going to say that we're just flooding port doesn't exist. Moxfield that doesn't exist. We're just going to play fairy tale and we're just feeding these people money. And they're just ripping off the money and people are willing to rip off. That's not what I can do for my country. That's what I can do for my country. This is the greatest PhD in human history and it's unarguably verified now. We have enough data now that we know the sea star collapse, the anchovy sardine collapse, the well collapse, the Cancer rate, the heat dome, all in symphony. We know factually that it, it, something triggered it. We call that an outlier in science. The greatest outlier in human fucking history we know for a fact was 2011. That's absolutely unarguable. Gilded in gold, cash in concrete, science. Absolutely unarguable. Doesn't matter what even happens from here on that. Happened. Not going to happen. Happened. So when the only thing we can get to work on is what was this trigger. It had to be something insanely radical that's never happened. It wasn't gradual like this. You're telling me global warming just started in 2011, 2012? Yeah, that's what you tell No, I don't think so. It's been going on for a long time, at least since the nuclear industry. Boiling all the Earth's water. Oh, yeah, that's going to cool the planet. But this was a trigger. We know that's what an outlier is. So what was the outlier in 2011? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Did a meteor strike the Pacific Ocean? Off the coast of California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska. Did a meteor, a giant big meteor? No. Nope. Did we have 9 million exile Valdezes? No. And I can't even talk about the Demic, and you know where I think it came from. You know, but that's just another coincidence. So about all this, so what happened? What happened? Oh, 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 wait a minute. Three full core meltdowns, eight spent fuel bowls, seven in pool including the Mosfield, blown to cement. The, some, the, probably the biggest load of nuclear waste on the face of the planet. At least the top two or three. 40 years in spent fuel pools, including Mox fuel pool. So many apparatuses just blew to fucking smithereens. And then they just fairy tales you and they, you know, accident, leak. Wouldn't use the word meltdown. Wouldn't you use the Fukushima word? You don't think that's a conspiracy? When Senator Wyden from Oregon was head of the committee, he went to Fukushima. He reported back to Christ and said, Fukushima is much worse than we thought. Barbara Boxer's office held hearings out of it. They pushed it into the FICA court. Remember I'm dealing with that with all Senate offering? I'm dealing with all those people. 
at three radio shows, and they slowly, systematically went to work on me. You know, why didn't they just kill you? Well, I think that probably had that debate. And I think I had so much momentum, the million mass march, where I think they felt like that, that would martyr me. So, in fact, they just do what they do. Slander me. They hire teams of trolls. I mean, dozens of YouTube sites. You, Johnny, come lately. You can talk all you want. But in 2012, 2013, 2011, there were dozens. of. I mean, I had, I was everywhere. I was on all the alternative radio shows. I, was, I remember I blew my, took my moratorium off the interviews. And I did 90 interviews in 60 fucking days in 2013. 90. Some of them were insane. I was everywhere. You know, telling this. And it isn't like I wasn't bombarded and blasted everywhere. And I was right the whole fucking time. What did I get for it? I got financially destroyed. I got slandered. Why I'm a current tradition, which are felonies in all 50 states. Dozens of Facebook pages. Dozens of YouTube sites. It wasn't just dots and, you know, all these other freaks. There were dozens. There were people all over. I mean, some of these Facebook pages, I mean, over the top. 100% with my name, I do nothing. But, and it wasn't just Craig who's still out there doing it. I mean, know who that lunatic is. I mean, we know who these people are. I'll, I mean, there were dozens. They're all gone now for the most part. But the damage has been done. You know, the frog boy, what they did to me. I almost got me killed. You know, well, I can't, so I, I can't believe the situation. I was thinking about it today. What a fucking journey for 13 years. In critical condition, almost all of it. Open heart surgery twice. I was just looking at my scar today. And I was like, oh, God, my pacemaker. Just see the doctor this week. Come on. So oh, fuck. Because they scanned me for the first time since I have a pacemaker now. Harvest an artery out of my leg. I lost all my teeth, lost my gallbladder, lost all my money. You know, I went all in. I'm glad I did. Such an important. So we know the outliers 2011. It's absolutely unarguable. There's only one possible outcome. Well, not one possible outcome. There's only one possible culprit. We know that now. Three, four chrome meltdowns of Fukushima, and they're going to tell you one in Chernobyl is more than three. And that's the mainstream, these fainting ghosts. I mean, I had a student stop me that we were here a little while back. Hey, hey, you're Kevin Lynch, right? The biologist, you know, I, I watch your video. He says, you know, it blows my mind. I'm a chemistry student here. I'm a biologist. And these guys, how is it possible they're still saying that Chernobyl is worse than Fukushima? He says, it just boggles my mind. I tell these professors, well, what are you talking about? There's three full meltdowns of Fukushima, Japan. Eight cement, and one, and they're still, he says, it's, I says, yeah, it's Orwell, right? It's Orwell. And he says, oh my God, it is. I says, yeah, it's Orwell and as it gets. So long video, you know, not to mention all my work at Senate Opry. That's the book. That's the exchange when they're, I'm the guy that leaked that out to the world. The, exchange. the activist that matters, the activist that wins. And, you know, you pay a heavy price. Oh, boy, have I. You know, tired, worn out. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. To say the least. It's been fucking, it's been tough, man. It just exposes who runs the world. The nuclear energy crime scene is getting their number one tool. I mean, when you can freaking cover up, oh, I knew they could. I mean, it was only a matter of time this narrative comes out. I mean, it's the greatest ecological catastrophe, and I never used the word ELE, not one time. I don't believe that. I called it genocide, and I mean, it's genocide of these animals so grotesquely. I mean, lots of these species, 90-something percent. Will they come back? I certainly hope so. You're no match for her, the mighty blue lady, just like me coming back, you know. I've made a hell of a comeback. I've gained 30 pounds of muscle. You know, God, I was faded away. I think about it, and I had no help. I had, I'm had i begging for somebody. Hell, hey, my car broke down. I need a car. Nobody would give me a car. Nobody would do anything for me. You know, I had, you know, I have basically three people that give me money, which is really, that's it. They're Californians. You know, I used to have some funding from Austria. I used to have some funding from lower Manhattan, but I know it's a tough gig. But it's only been 13 years, only. But in... Science, I mean, and I'll tag this, you know, male tag of plutonium. That's the greatest outlier in human history. And all the data has come forward now. Every week, every other day, we're getting a new study coming out verifying Kevin Lynch's work. Yep, the outlier was 2012. The outlier was 20, you know, the plankton collapse, the blob did this. 
question is, well, what caused the block? Well, you want to finish that? You have to have a culprit. You have to have a trigger. It didn't just magically press on much happy. That's not what we do. This is not spooky science at a distance. This is not, I'm not a theoretical physicist, which is philosophy crackpot shit. You know, ask Einstein. No, I'm a biologist. We actually have to do the work. We have to have the evidence. We have to hypothesize the knowledge. Then we have to do the work. 13 years ago, I've done the work of a thousand biologists. Then you defend your work. Defend your work? Why well, I'm in critical condition with no money against this tsunami of fucking ignorance and fucking, I mean, and it just shows you what a selfishness play and everybody's going to go along and ignore it. Then nuclear energy emperors have no fucking clothes. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I mean, so it's an arguable now. You know, the only thing you can have the argument with me now is what was the trigger? We know the trigger was 2011. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You know the only event that I can find out there, radical in 2011, which is obviously scars across my face. I was not born with those in this protesting the nuclear industry in this violent place. You know, my dad, when I was young, that brilliant genius he was who died young of cancer. Boy, shut the fuck up and get to work. You're way too pretty to have an opinion. I know what he meant. You know, there'll be time. You know, and so I did. Everyone has their place in time. I fight for her. She fights for me. Kevin D. from the Ecology. You broke the chain. You promised you would never break the chain. And we're just going to go along and the powers that be run the world. And you're politically dogma, dogma reinforcement on, you know, print media, biology. Go ahead. Because you branded yourself in history. Everybody did. And so did I. So I have some nuclear roof for you. I have some for me. But you better wear, you're going to have to wear yours with a difference. And if you don't know what that means, huh, sweet are the uh, use of adversity. That'd be Shakespeare, boys. I mean, the country and worst version of Hamlet, son of Cassandra. I mean, I used all that. My art background, my biology background, my, I don't eat, sleep, drink it. I sleep with it. Full of leukemia, the new Semmelweis, you know. Germ theory, why do I wash your hands? Threw him in a rubber room, killed him. My work is verified. Being verified every day. If you can ignore it, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, let's build more. Give them more money. They ain't building shit. It'll shake out. What well, already has shook out, you know? And how about the cancer rates and all the people that have died because of the cover up? You don't think that's criminal? It's fucking evil. So I'm a marine biologist. I'm a, you know, scientist. I'm a Media, I'm a television man. You've all gone along with this? Why? Why? I don't know why, man. But you did. And comfortability is not the zenith of life. <laughs> you think it is. You know, so you're branded in history. I mean, it's over now. I mean, the doing the work. You, I mean, how can you come out now and say, oh, well, I guess he was right. It was Fukushima because then exposes all these people what frauds they were for the last 13 years. The Marine Biology Department, the academia. How can they come out and say, well, it's obvious now. We know that it was 2011. It's obvious that it was Fukushima. Some in new energy. How can they say that now? Because then everybody's going to scream jump. Where the fuck were you for 13 years? And they're going to say, oh, oh, I might lose my house on the hill. My department chairmanship. You already lost everything anyway. It's called credibility. You have none. Zero. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. All I ever wanted was my peace of mind, for real. And that's what I got. The real scientist, main biologist, Kevin Blanche, the great Pacific Genocide. Stan Tuna, 